Today's video is gonna be slightly different. I'm recording on a Saturday and I'm about to take Binky Stinky the Cockapoo out on her walk on the South Downs and you guys can come along with me to see where I go, what we're up to, and what I'm thinking about. So let's go and hit the road. There's Binky, she's ready, look. So Binky is nine years old and she's a cockapoo and uh, she loves her daddy very much. So come on then Bink, let's go. Boots are already there, look, waiting. One. Two. Oh, my door. Drop. Binky, drop. Drop, drop, drop. Drop that, we're not taking that with us. There's my weekend car. Freshly serviced and cleaned. What do you think? What do you think of the plate? Not bad, is it? There's the house. And that's my daily driver. My Tesla Model 3 Performance. That gets me up to London and back every day on just pure electric. There she is. Let's go. Wait. So this is my little village called Catherington. And um, we've been here for about a year now. So we love it, very cute. And my house is just behind this big wall here. As you can see, hardly no one on the roads today. Just the way we like it. The Farmers Inn. They do lovely Sunday roast dinners there. And uh, we don't really drink, so we don't pop in there for drinks, but we just like our Sunday roasts. And sometimes when we go for a walk, we go down that kind of alleyway there, and that takes you onto the other part of the South Downs. But we're not going there today. We're gonna go out in the, the open fields. So we go through the pub car park. That's where you can sit out in the summer. I'm gonna go through here. We keep Binky on the lead for the moment because there's horses in this field. There we go, there's the horses. There's some sheep somewhere over there. And a little village church, which we'll walk by a bit later on. As you see, we're really exposed out here. Flat and right in the distance. Right, right, right in the distance. You've got the Solent and you've got the Isle of Wight. And we, our house is literally just there, just there. So we're right on the South Downs, lovely walks, lovely fresh air, just the way we like it. So what do you think? Would you rather live in the country or in the city? I like the fresh air and the open fields and the green space. Hopefully we haven't got much wind noise today. And we don't waste our recordings. But yeah, 
yeah, so I, I'm basically I was born in Portsmouth, so Portsmouth is over in the distance back there. I was born in 1970, and I've always been living down south, always been a Portsmouth boy, but I have not really been in Portsmouth for quite a while. There's nothing there really much to do there no more. And obviously my work is in London. So every day in the Tesla, up the A3, into Fulham, and that's where the office is. And that's why I've been working for the last kind of 15 years, long time. Maybe a little bit longer now actually. So we can take Binky off the lead here. Freedom now, don't you, Bink? Yeah. <clears throat> so I've been living over here for probably five years. Before we moved to Caffington, which is there, we lived in. Clan, no, not Clanfield, Horndean, and Horndean is just literally this, just over the hill here. So it was a lovely house. This is, that was during COVID we lived there. Lovely house, big garden, but not as cute as the place we're living in now. But where, where we are now is really countryfied. Not many people in the village, very peaceful. Over there, we were surrounded by other houses. And there's, you can see the church in the distance there. All Saints Church. I think it's like about 200 years old or something. So for you guys following me, thank you. It's not easy creating content and being interesting because I'm a boring old fart really. I do my best. YouTube's really hard. Uh, but I know how important it is and there's some people out there doing amazing jobs and interesting but everyone feels like they, they leave a, uh, lead a boring life but as I said I do my best this walk usually takes me an hour maybe a bit less sometimes depending on which location I walk to You can hear the birds singing. You see lots of wildlife. And the dogs love it out here. Peace and quiet. So I'm now about a mile away from my home and we're in the dense woodland, which is quite nice because the blue bells are out and there's lots of wildlife and squirrels everywhere. Sometimes you even see deers wandering around so we've got to keep an eye out for them because we don't want to see any dogs going after them. But yeah, the bluebells. So this time of year, they all come out. How pretty are they? They're only out for maybe four or five weeks and they go. But it's a very lovely, quiet place. And you've got a little bench here. You can sit and just chill out and think about what problems you have and what things you've got to deal with each day. So this is what I love to do. I love to come out here, just walk and walk and get fresh air and think about what I need to do at work and what I need to do in my personal life and just get out. Get out, get out and start thinking about just new ideas, clearing your head. There's lots going on in my life. When you're an entrepreneur, business owner, stressful you know stressful especially when you're on your own you don't have any partners it's just you you your decision matters some 
horse's feet out of it. Whatever decisions you make count. You know, I have had business partners. For those of you who have watched my previous videos over the last three or four or five years, I do discuss the nightmares I've had, the trials and tribulations, people coming into my life and pulling my pants down and ripping me off. Where I'm quite an open person, quite salesy, you know, I want, the, I want to see the best in everyone. And obviously people can take advantage of that, take advantage of what I need and how they think they can improve and they come into my life and just try and rob me blind, basically. You'd think I would have learned, wouldn't you, at 54 years old. Hopefully I have now. This takes us back round onto the top field to All Saints Church. This is a, I call this house the Hansel and Gretel house. It's right on top of the hill, very secluded. Don't think I would like to live up there. It's just a nightmare because this road, well the road here that goes about half a mile and uh, it's not even a proper road, it's a dirt track. So can you imagine when the weather's poor or snowing, how the hell do you get up and down? Yeah, so it's been a, a long journey, full of trials and tribulations, lots of good times, lots of bad times, um, but that's business. And um, I just wanna go into how I really went from starting the company with no money, with no leads, and just getting the phone to ring for the very first time. Well, going back at 2010, obviously social media was quite new, wasn't it? Uh, I think Twitter was around and maybe uh, Facebook was just in its infancy, but not many people knew about Google AdWords. So Google AdWords were quite affordable back then. So I understood that if we paid for a keyword, like for instance, basement contractors Fulham or basement contractors uh, Chelsea or Fulham builders or Chelsea builders, we would go up to number one in Google. Well, going back then, if we were to pay for that keyword and someone clicked it, it would be like 10 or 15 pence. If you did that now, you're competing with other companies like yours and the bid is going to be around about four or five pounds a click. So it's too much money these days. Uh, that's why organic is always kind of better. But yeah, we went to the top of the tree in Fulham in 2010 really quickly just by great branding, marketing and sales because the construction industry was quite prehistoric. Our competition didn't have a clue. And they, they know now, they understand now, because there's lots of brands uh, in the marketplace, very, very similar to ours. Designer build, luxury, high end. They've got uh, nice offices and they've got nice vans and they're proud of their brand. Going back in 2010, no one did that. No one did that. We were the first spending fortunes on black hoardings and logos and signs. Whew. I'm out of breath. Let's put Binky's leading again. Yeah. I'm gonna go through to this field. Woo. Yeah, so 2010 when it all started there was no sales pipeline we had no leads me and my buddy who I started the company with we were just a couple of jack the lads from Portsmouth trying to hit the big time and then one day the phone rang and we had our first job but just going back before that, 
I was already in the property industry because I was an off-market sales agent. So I used to find development opportunities for high net worths and then I used to get a percentage on the way in. So if the project was worth two million, I would have 1% of the project value. So that's not too bad. 20K for an introduction. And also I used to have 20,000 quid on the way out, a 1% on the way out. So it's very good. I did that for three or four years. This is, this is I think it was um, 2005 I started that. 2005, yeah. And then one day, one of the investors said to me, Nick, if you find a project, I will give you the money to do it. So that's what happened. Sorry about that, I just had to jump onto my phone because the bloody GoPro battery went. It's not very professional, is it? Yeah, so going back, I got my first investment from a, a high net worth and we purchased a property in Primrose Hill, which was an unmodernized studio apartment, which we bought for 275,000 pounds. We spent 30,000 on it and we sold it for, I think 350K a month later. So it's not a little, it's not a bad little profit margin. And that kick-started new. And then the second project we did with the same investor, was a house in Fulham, which we bought for 550. We got planning for a kitchen extension loft conversion. We spent 200,000 pounds on it, and we sold that one for 850, 900. So it's not bad. So as you can see behind me, this is All Saints Church in Caffington. It's about 200 years old, and it's beautiful. We come round here most weekends to have a walk through, and it is such a pretty church, so pretty. Um, and yeah, these tombstones are kind of over 150, 200 years old, and they're so old and worn out because of time. You can't even see the people's names on the headstones, just worn out completely. But yeah, it's very interesting and uh, very peaceful. But we're just, uh, coming out the church now and um, this is kind of back onto the main road where I live in Caffrington. So this is a, I'm gonna walk around here for the poppies. And what I'm going to do now, go back home, have some porridge and fruit and nuts on it. And then getting in my gym gear, heading to David Lloyd, doing some exercise. Then I'm going to go see my mum, who's 90 years old. See her once a week. Then doing a bit of shopping, food shopping, as I do most weekends, only for myself, my missus is working. It's not worth buying stuff for her because she wouldn't eat it. And then, I don't know, chilling out. So that's it, that's our walk completed. Let's go in. Open the gates. Pinky lead off. Come on in, Bink. So, 
hope you enjoyed our little walk through Caffington and uh, seeing what me and Binky get up to every weekend. Don't forget to please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really does help and like, and if it's any good, share. But uh, let's uh, catch up next week. See ya, bye.